A non-stop flight ticket from London to Barcelona is currently priced at 18 euros when offered by Ryanair, which is approximately 20 US dollar. In contrast, British Airways offers the same flight on the same date starting at 100 euros, which is roughly 109 dollar, and the price only goes up from there. The large price difference between Ryanair and British Airways for the exact same journey raises the question, how can budget airlines manage to consistently offer such affordable prices? While it's commonly known that budget airlines are typically more affordable compared to regular airlines due to their minimalistic approach, it's way more complicated in reality. So, to simplify matters, we will focus on the European business model of budget airlines, specifically Ryanair. Since these airlines generally offer even more competitive pricing, than the American versions. While budget airlines in the United States can be 10 to 20% cheaper than their regular airlines, in Europe, the price of a budget airline ticket is often only half or even a third of what a regular airline ticket costs. So, how do they manage to do this? Well, the most critical asset for any airline is its fleet of aircrafts. This factor can be a huge way to save money. In the months following after the 9-11 attacks, the aviation industry experienced a setback globally, causing most airlines to struggle to stay in business. This led to a decrease in the demand for new aircrafts, which, in turn, caused the prices of the aircrafts to drop. During this time, Ryanair made a very smart move and placed a massive order for 151 Boeing 737s at an incredibly low price. While such situations are rare, budget airlines can always place large orders, securing bulk discounts. It might seem strange that a budget airline purchases brand new planes, but the latest aircrafts on the market are the most efficient, resulting in more fuel savings. The fuel efficiency of new planes outweighs the higher purchase price on the long run, which is why budget airlines have a younger fleet compared to other major regular airlines. Budget airlines typically operate with a single type of aircraft. For instance, Ryanair exclusively utilizes the Boeing 737, while EasyJet relies on the Airbus A320. Just using one type of aircraft creates several advantages like streamlined training for pilots, flight attendants, mechanics, and ground personnel, resulting in significant time and cost savings. Inside budget airline planes, you won't find any unnecessary luxuries. They skip the fancy options to optimize cost efficiency. For example, Ryanair's seats cannot recline. They do this to avoid increasing repair costs and the need for more maintenance. The design of these seats also saves flight attendants time, as there are no seat back pockets that require cleaning between flights. Flight attendants on budget airlines are often in the early stages of their careers. Budget airlines tend to hire these relatively inexperienced flight attendants because they come at a lower cost compared to more seasoned professionals. However, these selected flight attendants may not receive extensive training in customer hospitality. They get a lot of essential safety training, but not as much training in customer service due to the budget constraints. Furthermore, they are often very versatile in performing multiple jobs. Upon landing, some flight attendants may proceed to the gate to check tickets, while others assist with cleaning the aircraft. This multitasking approach saves the airline from hiring additional staff positions. They also have to do the in-flight service, which is another way to generate additional revenue. Many budget airlines sell drinks, small foods, or even duty-free merchandise to create an extra income source. Now, let's talk about the airports. You won't typically find a budget airline operating at airports like London Heathrow, or Zurich Airport in Switzerland because these airports tend to be expensive. Rather than choosing these major airports with their hefty landing fees and intense competition for landing slots, Ryanair strategically selects smaller, less congested airports like Luton in the London area. This approach allows them to minimize operating costs and offer more affordable fares to passengers. Smaller airports often charge lower landing fees compared to their larger counterparts like Heathrow. In many cases, Ryanair and other budget airlines are the sole or one of the few carriers operating from these smaller airports, 
granting them a strong negotiating position. Frequently, they choose smaller regional airports and rebrand them as if they were part of a larger city. This allows them to negotiate for much lower takeoff and landing fees. And if the airport doesn't cooperate, they may even threaten to withdraw their operations until the airport concedes. When there isn't a cost-effective, profitable airport near a city, budget airlines might also schedule flights to major airports during off-peak hours when landing fees are lower and the chances of delays are reduced. Now that we have covered the most impactful savings budget airlines make, let's delve into more specific cost-saving factors. The aircrafts of budget airlines are generally in constant use. Budget airlines typically allocate just 30 to 45 minutes between the landing of one flight and the takeoff of the next, which often results in delays and provides little time for thorough aircraft cleaning. So now you know why the airline you are traveling with always suffers from a delay. However, this approach ensures that the aircraft is almost always generating revenue, and passengers aren't paying for the time the plane sits idle. Another key principle of budget airlines is the point-to-point -point model. Most regular airlines operate from hubs where the majority or all of their aircraft depart from. British Airways has London, Air France has Paris, and KLM has Amsterdam as their primary hubs. To reach most destinations with these airlines, you often need to connect through one of these cities if you want to fly with these airlines. In contrast, budget airlines strive to serve many destinations from various locations. However, this means that there will be some inconsistencies and some destinations may only be served a few times a week. The cheapest budget airlines may not even facilitate connections between flights. This approach would increase costs as they'd have to pay ground staff for baggage transfers, implement a more sophisticated ticketing system, and assist passengers in rebooking when they miss their connections due to delays. So, most budget airlines handle check-in primarily through machines. This approach significantly reduces personnel costs. Furthermore, traditional airlines face challenges in expanding their operations. They require substantial demand for any new route, as a significant portion of their revenue comes from business travelers. In contrast, budget airlines with a primary focus on tourists can turn any destination they add into a popular one simply because it becomes affordable to travel there. Some European traditional airlines have attempted to profit from this model by launching their own budget subsidiaries. For example, Air France established Transavia and Lufthansa introduced Eurowings. However, both ventures have incurred significant losses. What they seem to forget is that the United States underwent a similar phase a few decades ago. Delta launched Song, which failed. United Airlines started Shuttle, which led to bankruptcy, and then they did another attempt with TED, which also met the same fate. None of these attempts proved successful. Traditional airlines cannot easily circumvent their labor agreements, ethical business practices, and their commitment to their hub-based operations. The reason Ryanair and EasyJet succeeded while others failed primarily boils down to their size and adaptability. They boast hundreds of aircraft, serve hundreds of destinations, employ thousands of staff, and possess a negotiation prowess that allows them to outshine their competitors. Ultimately, competition benefits us as customers. Even failed budget airlines bring down the costs of regular airlines, enabling us to travel the world more affordably. So with that, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Until next time.